And then it started. And they were. Oh, yeah. You did a good job. <laughs> I'd like to call the Maumel City Council meeting to order. The first order of business is uh, Council Member Saunders just contacted me about 20 minutes ago, said he didn't think he would be here. If, and if he is here, he'll be running late. So uh, due to a family issue that they were having. Um, and then uh, next order of business is invocation and pledge of allegiance. And I've asked Council Member Vaporzan to lead us in that tonight. Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunities that have been provided for us. And I ask that you would be with us this evening as we have decisions to make. We ask that you would guide our thoughts. Um, our thoughts turn into actions, and uh, actions will determine our destinies. And so we need you to guard our minds and help us to think clearly, uh, to see things that will benefit our city. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with all those in California with these raging wildfires that are astronomical in number. It's hard for us to imagine that 30,000 acres a day um, is being destroyed by these fires. And um, Lord, I pray for uh, the uniform personnel on the ground, the firefighters for their safety, for these who are in harm's way, that you would protect them. Uh, we're thankful for the freedoms that we have brought to us by the men and women willing to sacrifice their lives for our protection. We ask for their safety and their protection. And then for our uniform personnel here in Maumel, that you would guide and protect them. Bless this evening, all the decisions that we make. May we honor and glorify you. It's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no special guests and announcements tonight, and we have the approval of the minutes of the July 2nd regular meeting. Those minutes are uh, in your packet. Is there any corrections or additions to those minutes? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as submitted. Is there a discussion on that motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. Motion passes. Next item is public comment. And I have two public comment cards, and one is on an agenda item, and one is not on an agenda item. I've added it to my comments, but at this time, we'll hear from Judge Rita Bailey with Maumelle District Court. Good evening. Um, I decided to come here today. I think the mayor and I have come to what I'm going to consider a great an agreement regarding what's um, going on with the court. There were some concerns about some cleanup uh, that needed to be done and possibly some building repairs. Um, I think that we've come to an agreement that will probably need to be in the best interest of court personnel and those that are invited to come there, uh, that we go ahead and move to uh, City Hall. I don't think it's gonna be cost effective at this time to clean uh, the building to the extent that would be necessary, uh, that would be satisfactory to us. So um, I, I'm coming here because I'm anticipating, we keep talking about money, that I may have some budget resolution issues, requests that may come in, down the pipeline. We've talked tacitly about possibly how we could pay for uh, much of it, but uh, I just wanted to make sure I gave uh, you guys, the city council, a heads up about that concern because I know uh, money is a real big deal. <laughs> and if that may be possibly coming down the pipeline, I wanted to tell you that uh, that may be an issue, something I may have to ask for in the future. Any questions, concerns? Council Member Vaprizan. To you or to the judge, do you know how much money it would take to repair the current facility? Well, to we have we have some rodents and so they're a lot of rodents and oh. so uh it's going to cost over three thousand dollars to just clean the courts side and it's going to we're going to have to replace every ceiling tile in there which is another three thousand dollars and that's not cleaning the old fire side where there's also rats in that area and so uh miss bailey did not feel like if she felt like if we only cleaned the court sides We'd still have the issue on the yeah. other side of the wall, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. which, so, 
So roughly it's $6,000 to do just the court side right now. And it'd be more than that if we go to the other side. We can move them cheaper than that yeah. based on what we have learned today. Okay. Yeah. My concern was that doing half of it wasn't going to be enough. It wasn't going to be sufficient at all. And I didn't see the light till today. I will say that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, we brought him back and I showed him. <laughs> showed him some demonstrative. Yeah. Hang on. We've got, Judge, we've still got some more. Uh, Lights I on. showed them some real live uh, evidence. Oh, they weren't live. It wasn't live. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think it was Scott. enough to convince them. <laughs> you know, we have the bond for the remodel for the city hall, and part of that was uh, incorporating courts. Can some of that money be used for the move? or did, I don't, or is I don't know that we can use it for the move necessarily, but if we need to do some renovations, we could use it for that. Okay, okay. good. That was my question. Yeah. 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 You can turn mine on. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we can do it for the move, but we can do any some renovations down there with that phone. Good deal. Yeah. The 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 first issue we've got is trying to get phone lines, and internet and all that there. And Miss Timmons has started on that process today. So, uh, and AT and T doesn't move uh, with the speed of light, even though they're data does but it's just going to take a little while to get that done. So, but I think the request is being made. Yeah. Right. Councilmember Mosley. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm sorry you had to endure that. I had no idea. Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. How long has it been going on? Well, I, I don't think we, honestly, um, we didn't realize that we had a problem to this magnitude until um, about June. We didn't even know then, but June the 1st when we had to have some work done on we were trying to get help with our surveillance cameras uh -huh. and by chance moved some ceiling <laughs> tiles. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I'm answering the question. We moved some ceiling tiles like June the 1st, okay. and then we, some some things fell. You had some surprises, yeah. And then it just kind of, you know, called pest control, and we got a response. They came and just tossed some stuff <laughs> up in the ceiling to, to, to address it. But then it just con it got, it got, it got worse and worse. All right. Thanks. That was just the beginning. We just didn't realize. The magnitude of it. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank Nothing you, else. Guys. All right. Thank you. All right. The next item is financial statement review, and that is done at the second meeting of each month. Mm -hmm. Uh, next item is departmental reports, and that's done at the first meeting. So I've asked our finance director, Ms. Shannon Vega, to give you a report tonight. She comes before you and gives you financial reports on a regular basis, but this is to report on her department. So, Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so we've got a lot of changes going on in the accounting department. I just celebrated my one year here with the city. Glad to have you. And I'm very happy to be here. Um, we've re restructured the accounting department to streamline um, and increase our um, workflow. September 1st, um, CAW, as you know, is going to be handling our billing. And um, we anticipate that there's going to be a substantial increase in our receivables. And this is because it's been mentioned, but I've verified it. So any money that comes in to CAW for that customer, it first pays our garbage, and then it pays their water. So that alone is going to increase um, our revenue substantially. But due to those changes and the increase in work capacity that we're going to have with all that going away, all that money coming in, having to process that, having to process invoices, um, our um, billing position has been eliminated. Um, and then after that happened, um, our accounts payable coordinator, um, she got a new job within the city in another department. She's moved over to um, animal control and super excited about that. And um, so, we had an open position. It's already been filled, and um, our new coordinator starts um, August 20th. So we're real excited about her coming to the team. 
let's see. Um, so um, we've con we are continuing to cross train um, our staff. Um, Amanda is working with us as well for backup, and we're very grateful for that. Um, and we're continuing to improve our internal controls. So that's all I've got. Does anybody have any questions? Councilmember Holt. During the um, audit review uh, in the last meeting, I believe you had mentioned, made mention that there are some adjustments that will be needing to be made. Um, changes, is that right, in our audit process? Did I hear that right? Yes, sir. And, and are those, I assume, sounds like they're going to be on the way right away or you, you're done um, with those or whatever? No, we're, we're still working on it. Um, I owe the auditors some information as well as some of the other departments, um, but we're working on that daily. Um, so, so do we anticipate the audit? I don't have a date okay. of when it's going to be ready. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're doing an awesome job and we're so very pleased. Thank with you. you. I appreciate that. Councilmember Scott. Yeah, I'm very glad to have you and happy anniversary. Thank you. And <laughs> congratulations on your new hire and the streamlining of your department. So I think those are going to be some great changes. Yeah, we've got a great team. To be able to get a lot of work done. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're making progress, I believe, on reconciling the spreadsheet that we use for budget so that the numbers reflect yes, sir. are more. I mean, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've actually started working on that um, already because um, the mayor and I have put together the the uh, uh, preliminary calendar for the budget process. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, the other questions for Ms. Vega? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next item is a procedural motion. We need a motion from the floor to read all resolutions and ordinances by title only tonight. So moved. Second. We have a motion second to read all resolutions and ordinances by title only tonight. Is there any discussion on that motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. Motion passes. We have no unfinished business. <laughs> Moving on to new business. Uh, we have the uh, resolution number 2018-21, amend the name of the Public Works Building. Madam City Clerk, if you'd read that by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maumelle, Pulaski County, Arkansas. Resolution number 2018-21, a resolution naming the Public Works Building, the Robert Cogdell Public Works Complex. And this is a, a resolution that's sponsored by Council Member Holt, so I'll turn it over to him. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, during the Memorial Day service, um, Ms. Jan Hoag uh, greeted me and asked me to consider or um, see about having uh, the building n named after um, uh, Mr. Robert Cogdell. I told her I would be more than happy to sponsor uh, the resolution. I never knew Mr. Cogdell. Um, I did have the honor of attending the funeral. It was obvious that he was a, a greatly loved and respected member of the city government. Um, so I felt like that it was um, um, in appropriate that we uh, consider to um, him. I have also asked Ms. Hoag, if I may, Mr. Mayor, to uh, approach the um, podium and share with uh, the members of the council her thoughts about um, uh, him being honored as so. Okay, yeah, and she filled out a card, so yes. Ms. Uh, Ms. Hogue, if you want to come forward, state your name and address for the record, please, if you would. And kind of hard to call her Miss. I called her Alderman. Yes, it feels here. kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> Jan Hogue, 134 Alpha Blossom Loop. I did speak with Alderman Ho uh, Holt, and uh, I guess it was May. It was the Memorial Day ceremony about sponsoring a, a resolution to name the public works complex after Mr. Cogdell and call it the Robert Cogdell public works complex, which would encompass all of the public works building. Uh, I do realize that we have a, a small street, a short street named after him, but uh, it's important to me to do more. I think it's important to other people in my mail. Uh, and so I'm just gonna ask for your consideration. I hope you can support the uh, 
resolution, and I know you've all read it and probably already have a pretty good idea of what you want to do. So I appreciate your time. Thank you, Ms. Hope. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that we accept resolution 2018-21. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2018-21. Is there any discussion on that motion? Councilmember Scott? Uh, Beverly Masters, uh, former <laughs> former um, city clerk for 25 years and very, very good friend of Mr. Cogdell's has written a little something that she asked me to read tonight. Okay. She says, Honorable Mayor Watson and City Council, I apologize for not being able to attend this meeting in person to express my support in the adoption of the resolution naming the Public Works Complex in memory of Robert Cogdell. It wasn't because Beverly had uh, a conflict. She said that she was just so emotional about it that she knew she couldn't stand up here and make this statement without bursting into tears. So she's very sincere about this. Robert spent 47 years working in Maumel. He, st he started working for Jess Odom in 1971 as an equipment operator. In May of 1986, he became an employee of the newly incorporated city of Maumel as public works director. He took this department from operating out of a former military barracks built in the mid-1940s and heated by wood-burning stoves to a modern, efficient facility that he was very proud of. Robert set very high standards for himself and his staff. He met every challenge placed before him. He strived to provide the citizens of Maumel with excellent services ranging from street, right-of-way, and drainage maintenance to curbside household waste and recycling pickup. Robert also supervised the animal control department. Robert would have been the first to give credit to the employees and city management he worked with over the years for his success and successful he was. Robert was a humble man who loved his work and only wanted to do his job well. He would have been a bit embarrassed by this attention, but at the same time very proud to have his name placed on the complex. Robert was more than a city employee. He was my friend for over 30 years, a friend that I admired and respected, a friend that I could count on, a man that Mom L could count on. I was very fortunate to have known Robert and I miss him every day. Beverly. I ask the council to remember and honor Robert with the passage of this resolution. I didn't do much better than she did. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other comments? If not, all those in favor of resolution number 2018-21, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion passes. Next item is resolution number 2018-22, approving a conditional use permit. Madam City Clerk, if you read that by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maumel, Pulaski County, Arkansas, resolution number 2018-22, a resolution granting a conditional use permit to the Christian Life Church to locate a church in a C2 zoning district. Okay, we have... Uh, representatives from the church here and also from the real estate firm if there's any questions for them council member mosley uh yeah i've got got a couple of questions uh i was wondering what part of the building they might occupy and uh, whether they're going to actually be buying the building or just leasing okay M mr nary do you want to take that or do you want uh someone from the yes sir i'll do that okay Jim Neri, Director of Planning and Zoning, they are purchasing the, the entirety of the, of, the, of the building. They're going to use uh, just a bit of the west side of the building for their church services while leaving most of the east side and the center side available for uh, further leasing okay. to attract other businesses. I drove by there today. There's a company called Sink or something like that. I can't remember what it was uh, in that far western part. It's a smaller facility, so I guess they'll occupy that. I guess that's unoccupied right now. The, the way I remember it, I remember the old um, family video. Yeah. When I first came to Mall Mel, that's what was in there. And uh, that was their offices, if I remember correctly, and then the print shop. But uh, they're not really going to occupy even half the building, at least for now, okay. for, their, for their church services, because their congregation may grow. 
And, and there's nobody currently occupying the building? No, yeah. sir. Yeah. All right. They're, they're taking it all. Okay. That, that's fine. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Council Member Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know in the meeting um, when uh, for the uh, Planning Commission meeting, um, there was some contingency on fire and code. I'm, I'm assuming that that's been met before it came before our council. There should have been something in your packet from uh, Did I miss that? Fire Marshal John Payne. All of those issues have been satisfied. Okay, I'm sorry. I just overlooked No, no, that. no. That, that's quite all right. And, and I probably should make mention of this, uh, Mr. Mayor, with your permission, for further <laughs> conditional uses that come before you. In reality, what the Planning Commission recommends and what you ultimately vote on one way or the other is that particular entity or that particular business, is it a good fit for this property that it's on? Not really the, the any fire code or building code issues there may be. In other words, they may never get to move in there, uh, whoever is going for the conditional use permit, but that's really not the charge of the Planning Commission or in my opinion, yours, is, is that particular entity a good fit for this property? And that's all. Now, in this case, of course, it's all very uh, important that they do pass these things, which they have, but uh, using that as a contingency for a due pass recommendation to you all, or ultimately if you pass the resolution or not, probably does not apply. Because if you look at the ordinance, all they have to produce if the space or the property they want to locate on has not been reviewed, then they have to produce a site plan and a landscape plan. If in fact in this area, which has been reviewed, they don't have to produce that. In this case, they produced a, a survey. That's all they have to do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Williams. Uh, Mr. Nary. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Just stay put. Um, the CUP, is it for a, uh, an amount of time or, and it has to be uh, uh, redone or renewed or? Well, no. Uh, this, this conditional use permit there. is good for the Christian Life Church only and only at this location. In their case, they were at Maumel Corners. They received a conditional mm -hmm. use permit in 2016 to locate there. Well, now they want to locate somewhere else. So it doesn't move with them. They have to get another conditional use permit because as you can imagine, this business or church or whatever, it might have been just fine right here, and there may have been no issues, but 300 feet to the south, there may have, there may be issues. So it's it's only good for that particular entity at that particular location. And they're not even looking at the property across the parking lot. It's just this. Just this. Okay. okay. It's just this. Their survey shows uh, they have about 35 parking spaces, which right now. Uh, according to our ordinance, is about four times more than they need. Okay. So, but hopefully they'll grow. Gotcha. Thank you. Well, whoa, got one more light, <laughs> Mr. Neri. <laughs> Who's up? <laughs> Councilmember Saunders. Uh, thank you, Mayor. You just you thought you were going to get away. Um, I'm I'm just curious about the building. Now that entire building is empty at this time. Uh, yes, sir. And I can't remember for the love of me how long but it seems to me it's been a long time empty do you know approximately yes i do uh the last um, business license fee that the print shop paid was in the fall of 2014. so that was it wow. yeah. it had been a long time sure would be nice to see something go in there and occupy that space for i think i think you, know. you will yeah, I think you will. Okay, thank you. I was all yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> He's the ground. Do do any of the the pastor or the members of the church want need to speak or want to speak or you're you're happy? Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, Council Member Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that we um, accept Resolution 2018-22. We have a motion and a second to accept or, uh, resolution number 2018-22. Is there any discussion on that motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. Motion passes.
Next item is res resolution number 2018-23, approving a preliminary development plan. Madam City Clerk, if you'd read that by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maumelle, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas. A resolution to be entitled resolution number 2018-23, approving the preliminary development plan of Carnahan Village Subdivision. The developer and the engineers are in the audience if there's any questions for them. This is the owner and developer, I guess. Maybe it's even more so the owner. <laughs> Hopefully, I guess. Resolution 2018-23. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution number 2018-23. Is there any discussion on that motion? Not all those in favor, please signify, signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion passes. And y'all are welcome to leave if y'all want to. You, you, you can stay if you want to. So. Uh, next item is resolution number 2018-24, amending the 2018 general fund budget. Madam City Clerk, if you'd read that by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maumelle, Pulaski County, Arkansas. A resolution to be entitled Resolution Number 2018-24. A resolution to amend the 2018 Maumelle General Fund budget. Okay, you have a uh, uh, memo from uh, Chief Ezel in your packet, and uh, I'll let him just come up and uh, simplify the memo, maybe, or just give you the, the short version of it there. Uh, but we had an issue with a brush truck, and so that's why we're here today. Absolutely. Um, in 2015, we were notified by Arkansas Forestry that we had received a, uh, an 84 Chevy C10 4x4 uh, that I guess Chief Glenn had put in for. Um, at the time, we had an F350, just a regular uh, gas burner uh, that was uh, dually on the back. Um, at that time, we decided to take the dually out of service as a brush truck and put this in service. So we slid the skid unit out of one and put it into this one. Um, we have since turned the dually into a uh, squad that actually gained the points we needed to get us down to the ISO 2. Um, so taking that back and putting it back in service as a brush truck is just not viable. But the Chevy 4x4, it's a 1984, it's a military surplus vehicle that we got from Forestry um, for a cost of about 4600 bucks back in 2015. Um, roughly a month and a half ago, we started having some electrical issues. We took it to a shop. They had it at the shop for about a month and a half. Um, we're starting to try to wire around the fuse box that was in there, and the fuse box actually... My guess is some young kid in the military kept thinking, all right, I'm tired of this truck that keeps coming back blowing fuses. So they just kept stepping up the size of the fuse uh, to the point where how this thing didn't catch on fire, I don't know, but it melted every stitch of wiring all the way across the dash inside. Um, so the gentleman tried to wire around it and whenever he realized that he was actually trying to pull some extra wire through the dash to try to do some soldering and try to work around it, and he couldn't get any extra wire to come out. So he takes the dash apart and the whole thing is melted together over there. So I went out to Camp Robinson and actually spoke to the military mechanics out there. They said, you're not gonna find one of those wiring harnesses anywhere for the military surplus vehicles. We started calling around and everybody we talked to on the mechanic side of things said the exact same thing. So um, it is basically a truck that is useless to us now. Um, it, it is ours, it is the city of Maumelle's, so we can surplus that out. But uh, what we're looking for is a single rear um, axle truck that's a four wheel drive. And we have looked everywhere um, across the United States. The one that we found is in, actually in Illinois. Um, it's got 64,000 miles on it at a cost to us, they, they've said they could lower it. They've lowered it three times already, but they said they would lower it down to 30,000 for us if we could get that money together. Um, it is red, so it does not have to be painted. The only other one that was halfway viable, but it was 42 grand, was gray in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, these work trucks like that that are single axle, are, they're just hard to come by. 
Um, but in 30 years, 361 days of service in the fire service, the duallys get stuck. Um, so I don't, you know, that's why we wanted to go with the single axle vehicle. So, um, just as, as a matter of fact, we've had 28 um, outside or brush fires that a brush truck has responded on the last two years. 25 in the city of Maumelle and three outside of the city of Maumelle. So without a brush vehicle in the city, we would have to rely on mutual aid from North Little Rock or Oak Grove to come in and help us put, put the fire out. But perfect, for instance, what you're seeing out in California is exactly what we have here. The wildland urban interface where you've got a bunch of trees and big forest right behind the residences is exactly what's going on out there. Um, so that's really why we need this vehicle here, is just to make sure this doesn't happen to us here. There's actually a couple of neighborhoods I've driven around with the mayor before and said, you know, we're one wind-driven fire away from burning down an entire city block in some areas of town. So. And I'm open to questions. Of okay. Council Member Saunders. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Chief, um, two things. One, do you think this would endanger our, our ISO 2 rating? Do I, do I think what? If we don't replace this vehicle. We don't have the brush truck? Um, not necessarily. Would it affect our ISO rating? Um, but again, you know, I can't go back and take the squad out of service because the squad is actually, if, if our tower goes down tomorrow for some reason, the squad that we have, which is the old, old brush truck, actually has a bunch of ladders on it, has generators on it, it's got SCBAs on it, so it serves a purpose, a dual purpose, and actually the volunteers use it to respond in, but it also can serve as a backup to our tower that, that's here. Um, but a brush truck, realistically, if we have something major, uh, we get something in the woods, what was it, 2012? They had a big fire here where they actually had to do airdrops. Um, up on the hill by the water tower up here. So that's the situation I want to protect against by having this truck in service. Plus, you, number two, plus you, you indicated that there are areas that you're concerned about uh, wooded or wild areas close to residences which could pose danger. Right. And you know me, I'm all into safety of citizens. That's job one. Right. So. We have the, you know, one of the first purchases I made when I got here was a UTV uh, because of all the walking trails that we have here. But it has a 50 gallon tank on it, so we can't put a lot of fire out with that. And right now, that's the only option we have to fight fire off the road. So, Indian pack. We don't take, yeah, well, yeah. We don't take engines off the road. So. Yeah. Okay. That gets really expensive to get those out. Yeah. Thanks, Council, Chief. Councilmember Mosley. Yeah, I'm trying to understand what a brush truck does. Uh, uh, I'm assuming it's equipped. Uh, you talk about a skid that would be mounted on it or something. What, yes. What, what uh, so that it's actually a skid unit. It's got a tank and it's got a pump on the back of it and a hose reel um, to where we can actually get out off the road. It's four wheel drive. So we're able to get up into the wooded area if we need to. It carries rakes, paddles, all kinds of stuff. To, and it'd be refilled by a fire truck if it yeah. runs out of water it can go back right. down to the street and it's sort of correct okay so it's kind of like a surgical strike then. yes so, yeah. yes absolutely all right um and do we have to pay any money to uh, to outfit the thing or is it no sir okay you just mount that it's already red we've got a light bar on that truck and we've got the skid unit in the back the only thing we'll be out is uh striping it and putting mall mail fire on the side of it and we've got the money to cover that. I just don't have the $30,000 to cover that, <laughs> my budget. Uh, you may have already covered this. I may have just missed it, but uh, uh, is, is there any possibility you could take that dually, stick that skid on there and make it, make it go for four or five months? Would that, would that work? That would actually affect our ISO rating because that squad got us the extra points we needed because it serves as a backup to our tower. Okay. So would you would you deem this as an emergency? I mean, is it something yes. that just can't wait? Yes. When, when are the most fires during the summer, like where we are? Towards the yeah, right where we're at. If it, if we get a dry spell for a couple of weeks and don't get any rain, um, what, what do you do if, if this happens? What 
um, and with the way you are right now? Right now, it would be call Oak Grove and call North Little Rock to come into our city to help. Okay. You have any idea what that truck sold for originally? Uh, we actually built that truck um, on the Chevy website, and it's I'm sorry, it's I'm a, almost I'm the one you're about to buy. Yeah, it's almost fifty-three thousand dollars full price. Okay. So we're getting it for about sixty percent of the cost. Yeah, it seems. Boy, I'm not into trucks, uh, but it sure seems like it's held its value pretty well. Trucks do. For, it has. And th this truck is actually it's from the north, so it's actually built with extra uh, springs and everything for pushing a snowplow. So it's actually got better stability there. It, uh, and we actually did, we checked to make sure they sent us pictures of the undercarriage, make sure everything wasn't rusted out because a lot of times you get a truck from the north and you've got rust problems from the salt and everything on the roads, so. Yeah, um, yeah I, haven't, I actually hadn't decided how to vote at this point. I came in here tonight saying I was gonna vote against it just because I don't like the mid-year stuff. And I don't like it any more I than wanna, you do. I wanna, see, <laughs> I wanna see things go through the budget process. It seems like, uh, I mean, we had a whole bunch of stuff here in the last couple of months, which I really objected to coming in at this time. Right. Uh, this sounds like actually a real emergency. So I'll flip a coin here in a few minutes. All right. And, and, and Chief and I talked about it. I mean, could we wait till next year? And we neither one of us felt like we could. I mean, wait till the budget process. Because I mean, neither one of us wanted to bring it forward either. But we felt like we had to. Because typically brush fires that we've had in Maumelle from my previous experience start somewhere around July 1 through October because that's just when you have the least <coughs> amount of rain, July, August, and even on into September. Now, it, right. it, you know, we've got a forecast of rain starting Wednesday, uh, I think, for a lot of rain, but they also forecasted four inches of rain like a week and a half ago, and we didn't get any of that rain in Maumelle. So, uh, but we're getting to the point, and the, the other thing is if, if uh, we call for Oak Grove, but they're fighting a brush fire out in their area, they can't come. So then you got to keep calling another department or another right. department. Yeah. And if, if the closest department may be helping them, depending on the size of the fire, so then you may right. be calling somebody in western Pulaski County to come across the river and get here. And right. sometimes you don't have that much time. We've actually, the out of those three that were outside of the city, two of them were on Pinnacle Mountain uh, the last couple of years where we've actually sent our brush truck and the UTV down there to help them out on big fires they've had down there. So you said you said we have about 28 brush fires a year we respond to. The last two years we've had 28, 25 in the city and three outside the city. Each each year. No. No, that's combined. For a total of two oh, years. Two years. Oh, yeah, it'd be like 14. It'd average just a little over one a month. So. Uh, and and if we get this truck, uh, when would you be? When would you have it all equipped and ready to roll? Uh, within two days, probably of us getting it here. So maybe what within two weeks you'd be ready. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. That's yeah, my plan right now is to drive up and get this thing and bring it back. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Council Member Vapers there. I just think the difficult thing is knowing all the money we've signed checks to the last couple of months, saying here's another one, and then come budget season, remembering all the things that we've already done, because this is a capital improvement project that would come forward in October had it run the normal process and that's a difficult thing that that that, that we face that I face in my mind um, I can and uh, if I were you I would say the same thing but I have difficult in my mind relegating what is an actual emergency compared to what is an emergency to use not an emergency to me and therefore so I try and see things out of uh, out of everyone else's eyes but it's a difficult decision to just stamp I'm with you that's an expensive that's an expensive truck and I'm not into to, to vehicles but a 64,000 mile vehicle for for 30,000 um, that's just it is a lot of money so it is a difficult decision and I'm I'm looking at you yeah. how, how are you gonna vote Can you do <laughs> <laughs> on a diesel vehicle 64,000 miles is nothing yeah, yeah. Uh, is there any, any way you could uh, find a, a more used one, get it for, uh, I mean, I've got a grandson that, I mean, not a grandson, but a nephew that drives a pickup truck that is pretty cool, and he bought it for $6,000. <laughs> <laughs> Was like, it four-wheel drive and diesel? 
I, I, I doubt you know, it. Like I say, it's cool. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. Like what I say, I, I've actually, you know, we, we've looked all over the United States for used four-wheel drive, yeah. uh, single-axle pickups that are long beds. So uh, it has to have a long bed for this skid unit to fit in the back of it. A short bed won't work. So, Do those things, are they going to encounter a lot of damage, scratches, stuff like that? Uh, Brush trucks? Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Well, I sure hate to see us buy one that's in that good of shape and <laughs> beat it to death, but... Yeah. Uh, okay. I guess that's why you have one. I mean, well, you buy them to beat up. My truck sitting out there costs a lot more than $30,000. Yes, that's so, what I was going to say. Yeah, so it's four-wheel drive. You, you not try decent. not to beat them up, but they will get scratched, and, and they will decent. get dinged. But. And it's not decent. Yeah, so mine was sixty three. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> are expensive. Yeah, real expensive. And they hold their value. They do hold their value, but and but mine is a short bed. My bed is five and a half foot long. Is all my bed is. So, but also have room to carry four people in it. So that's the slight difference. But, right. Yeah. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I kind of got ahead of me. I was going to say I have a four wheel drive pickup truck that costs a lot more than that and it's not a diesel four wheel drive it actually is the same model as the mayor it's red too it's red use it. but was that an offer no it was not i love that truck <laughs> but um to to kind of piggyback off of the comment uh is an emergency or not emergency well it's not an emergency when you don't have a fire in your backyard but it is an emergency when you do yes and the whole goal is to not have that emergency not to have that situation where you have that fire in your backyard. I think the easier thing for me to relegate now that we're talking is this is not a new thing. This is a replacement thing. Right. Yes. So if it was a new thing, if you were coming to me. That's, say, that's capital. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It makes more sense that way. Yeah. This isn't a new, you just dream this up. This no. is what we had and we need to replace it because this is the season. Correct. That makes more sense to me. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and I, that's kind of where I was going to go is that this is something that we enjoyed having or had to in our arsenal to keep us safe and now we don't so we need to replace it yeah. right. thank you that's all i have and all i can say about that is i know since 1997 we've had a brush truck in our fleet so yeah council member timmons i too came in thinking you know there's no way you know here we go again spending money that wasn't in the budget um but with it being said that, you know, this is something we have to have, the safety of the community, I mean, this is something we have to do. This is no really not an option. Trust me when I say if I could have waited, I'd have waited. But we can't wait. So. Councilmember Mosley. Uh, how long have you suspected we might need another truck? I mean, when did this wiring issue begin? This wiring issue on this vehicle? Um, well, it's an 84 vehicle, but it started about a month and a half ago and it was in the shop and we, that gentleman thought he was gonna be able to fix it, but he did not see the extent of the damage on the wiring harness. Okay, so it's really only been within the last two or three weeks that you've realized you can't fix it? Right. About a week and a half ago, yeah. Okay. I was, I was certainly upset about all that mid-year stuff that we did. Uh, um, so anyway, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Holt. Chief, I'm going to try to keep a face, straight face when I ask you this. Um, okay. we had the, um, money appropriated for the training officer, um, and the, um, pensions for the, um, um, uh, medics, uh, paramedics is all right. Um, and then that was 38,000. This is 30,000. My question is, do you anticipate anything else for this budget year coming up? I certainly <laughs> hope not. <laughs> I did not anticipate this at all. I mean, it, it pained me very much to have to go to his office and tell him that I had a truck that was shot. Will we get to take this out of the budget when we come to budget this fall? <laughs> that's a loaded question right there. <laughs> I think that's for us to yeah, decide. Would you be asking for a truck this uh, December at budget time? Rust truck? No, sir. Well, I mean, if, if, if you didn't buy this now. If I did not buy it, yes, I would have to ask for one at budget time. All right. And this truck might not be available then. 
and to keep track of when we do budgets at all the financial reports that you're given you've got at the very last page gives you where you've increased the budget and it gives you an item what you increased it for so when it comes budget time if you want to keep track of it you can look back at that la latest financial you have and it'll give you the budget resolution number and what was purchased right oh, i want to do that but i don't want to make it a punishment oh you don't want to make it a punishment, don't want to make it a punishment. oh you don't want to make it a punishment, don't want to make it a punishment. okay well, I was uh, Council Member Vaprazan was saying he didn't remember these, but that's a way to to help refresh your memory. So, right. Council Member Saunders, thank you, Mayor. Um, I know I keep preaching this at budget meetings for the last eight years, but there is nothing more important than the safety of the citizens. You can close everything else in this town down. Safety is our and our safety is provided typically via the police and the fire. And the police and the fire is over 50% of our budget, as you've seen so many times, because they require a lot of money. A lot of it's vehicles. Now, I just made my soapbox. A question for you, Chief. Do you anticipate this year, we bought, what was it, two years ago, an engine. And do you, an, do you anticipate any apparatus this year in budget? As far as engines? Unless no. there's an emergency, a breakdown, I understand that. Right, yeah. No engines are planned for this coming year. Okay, you're not you're not anticipating any big expenses. I certainly hope not. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. I move that we approve resolution 2018-24. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution number 2018-24. Is there any discussion on that motion? Not all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> uh, next item is uh, 2018 elected official salary committee. Uh, ordinance number 811 requires that uh, I set uh, an elected official salary committee to uh, Discuss this compensation of elected officials in the city of Maumelle. The committee shall be appointed by the mayor and shall include at least four citizens and two members of the city council. The committee shall analyze the compensation of all elected officials in the city of Maumelle and thereafter make certain recommendations to the city council concerning the same prior to the finaliza finalization of the budget for the following year. So uh, the I passed out the list of the names of the committee that... Uh, at your seat, uh, and what I will say is, uh, Mr. Scott Grummer, who is in the audience, and Mr. Jeff Van Patten have served on that committee. I know for at least two times, and maybe longer than that, but I know at least two times they've served on it. And uh, Marion Scott was also a member as a citizen on the 2014 uh, committee, and so that's kind of how I came up with this was. I want some continuity of people that had been on the committee in the past. And I asked Council Member Saunders, now I've made him chair since I asked him, but he's, he, he only has to be chair for the first meeting if he doesn't want it, and then he can pass it on to, to somebody else. And then I also asked Mr. Wallace Montgomery to serve. Mr. Montgomery applied for the Ward 2 position when Council Member Scott was appointed is a young man and he wanted to get involved in the community and uh, so I feel like this is a way to do that and then Joshua Price uh, is another young person because I think we need to get a little bit younger blood because uh, not speaking for the two on each side of me but just about everybody else in here is is got a little bit of gray in their hair so uh, uh, so uh, we needed we need to work on that and uh, that's a, a pledge that the Municipal League uh, asked us to take earlier this year was try to involve more young people in our government and things like that. So hopefully uh, this will get them uh, going. But Mr. Price ran for state representative uh, in the primaries, and uh, he did not uh, get that. So I figured he had some free time on his hands. So, uh, <laughs> but what I told everybody, too, was this is a short-term commitment. This is not like the sign committee because uh, you got to have a decision made and get it back to us so we can get it into the budget for this year. So uh, so hopefully two months uh, should wrap this thing up. 
And uh, y'all, uh, I also told everyone that asked that uh, Council Member Saunders would be contacting about their first meeting and all. So hopefully y'all can, and oh, and I don't know if he's even in the audience, but uh, Jared is on our uh, HR director will be the liaison. There he is, he's outside. He'll be the liaison to this committee. So don't abuse him, but you get to use him uh, as far as uh, asking information that you need. But as like any other committee meeting, it's open to the public. So Council Member Scott. I was wondering if uh, HR Director Azone was going to provide us with the comp salary like we had at the last one. He, I, well, he and I talked about that last week. And so yes, he will be providing you with the comp salaries as far, you talking about comparable cities? Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. That was helpful. How long do you anticipate that'll take? Um, I have the uh, 2017 salary study that was done out for from the municipal league uh, already on my desk. Okay. So I've got all the uh, cities that participated in that study already ready. Very good. Council Member Mosley. Uh, yeah, just a, a question of if if uh, they make a recommendation and, and the council approves it, at what uh, when will it become effective? It'd be it become effective January one of next year, unless y'all choose to do something different. Of 2019. Of 2019, yes, sir. Okay. So we'd have those figures for budget. For right? budget, yeah. Yeah, and and even though you even though we put the figures in the budget, it will require ordinances to change the salaries and. Uh, my recommendation is we use separate ordinances. That way you don't, if you want to revise one of them or something like that, you don't mess up the other one. So so you do one for each position that you have. Now we will not be, look. you will not be looking at the judge's salary because that's set by state law. So you will not be looking at that, but, and they will not be recommending that because that's set by state law. But the mayor, the city clerk, the city attorney, and then the city council uh, salaries is what they'll be looking at. So I would recommend four ordinances. The city attorney may tell me let's, it'd be better to do it all as one, but the last time we did them all separately as separate ordinances. So the council would have to pass that ordinance because it's, it requires the ordinance to change the salary because that's how the previous salaries have been set. Even though you budget, budgeted the money in the budget, it still would require the ordinance. Yeah, thank you. But the... Uh, and I think, and I didn't read it, uh, doesn't actually say when it becomes effective in the ordinance, but that's how it's always been in the past, is January 1 of next year. Any other questions on the elected official salary committee? All right. Next item is election of president pro temporum for the August 20th council meeting. I will be unable to attend that meeting. Uh, I think this is gonna be the first time in 11 and a half years that I've missed two meetings in the same year. But uh, uh, so uh, Council Member Anderson served in that position back in the month of June, uh, but I need someone else to step up and serve in that position for the August 20th meeting. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to nominate Steve Mosley to step into that position as uh, one of the longer term council members. Second that. Huh? I'm not. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be at the next meeting. Oh, <laughs> that's what I would have said. Yeah. yeah, I read your mind. I was sick that day, so I I would like to pass it this time. Thank you so much. Dog so. eat your homework. I yeah. You better not show up now. I know. I know. If, I, if I'm in town, I'm showing up. <laughs> but it's 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 about fifty fifty. So okay. So do you withdraw well, your motion? I, yeah. I'll withdraw. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I, I, I would uh, like to nominate um, Ken Saunders as President Pro Tem. Do I hear a second? I second. <laughs> we, have a, we have a motion and a second for uh, Council Member Saunders to serve as the President Pro Tem Poor for August the 20th. I don't mind. I've done it before. Yeah. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> All right. So... Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? Council Member Holt? <laughs> oh, well, I was going to nominate Anderson by acclamation uh, that he be not only to serve this one, but serve the capacity throughout the rest of the election term. But um, 
I will gladly accept Saunders as the uh, Alderman Saunders for the nomination. We have a motion and a second to appoint uh, Councilmember Saunders as President Pro Tem. Any discussion on that motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. Motion passes. And that's the next meeting? That is the next meeting, yes, sir. Be two weeks from tonight. Um, moving on to mayor's comments. Um, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, I got like either phone calls or several emails from several people regarding Victoria Circle drainage project. And so uh, I passed out an estimate that the engineers have made uh, for the Victoria Circle drainage project, it's $136,000. Uh, it's what that drainage would require. That's been a drainage issue for as long as I've been mayor, but we could never make a, a very good determination of how to solve the situation, but the engineers kept looking at it. We did a lot of utility locations, uh, having one call come out and locate where utilities were, and shooting grades and they think that we can make this work by putting in 1,300 feet of pipe, basically. Um, no, excuse me, uh, 16, 610 foot of pipe, <coughs> 1,300 foot of saw cut because we've got to put it down the roadway coming from two different directions. Victoria Circle was built before we were an active city, I will say that. And so the plans weren't reviewed real well. There's two drainage boxes in the entire subdivision. They're on the southeast corner and the entire subdivision is too flat. The streets are too flat. And so we're having to add four new boxes. I believe that's correct. Uh, yeah, four new boxes uh, and uh, then add the pipe and then it'll drain to the southern edge. There's a uh, a swell and a ditch basically that, that drains it right now. But the problem is the ditch at Alano Palmer is not deep enough to have enough adequate fall in that swell. I guess they tried the swell back 25 years ago or something like that, but it just continues to get blocked up because there's no fall to it at all. And so it continues to get blocked up and it doesn't drain. But what this doesn't include after that drainage work is all done, we'd have to do a street overlay over the entire roadway, especially the area that we have dug up. And Do we have an estimate okay. on the overlay? I do not have an estimate on the overlay, uh, but we have $75,000 in our total budget to do drainage, and that's to try to do drainage projects all over town at $10,000 or $20,000 a pop. And so we don't have adequate money in our budget currently to do this. And so my recommendation is that the council take this up uh, in the budget process and go forward with that uh, for the 2019 budget. Council Member Mosley. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I've been down there and looked at it. I've been down there two or three times and I've seen it right now. It doesn't have any water there in the street, but nor it's just because we've had dry weather, but normally it, it's, oh, it's a big puddle and uh, it's, it's kind of an eyesore and a mess and everything. Uh, and it looks like what, and, and I don't, and, and that's kind of my question, is there, is that the only problem we've got is just that accumulation of water there? Is there, is there other uh, reasons to just completely over, you know, do the whole thing like that? Uh, in other words, in other words, if, if it would fix the problem that's, bothering people and unless their houses are being flooded I think that uh, the little the little uh, uh, cement ditch that heads off toward uh, the boulevard uh, it's it there's a little rise in it and if it if you could just if you could just uh, smooth that down I think all that water would drain off if that's the only problem we're having well, there I, I mean our engineers have looked at it and they're not recommending that because your water is all coming from other areas of the subdivision seeking its way there. And I think yeah. you're always wind up with water standing in the curb and gutter unless you can ca capture it before it gets to that swell area. So there's, there's, there's drainage that's being put 
west of where the existing pipes are also. Okay. And north. So is there anybody in the audience that's uh, familiar with that tonight or going to speak or anything? I'd I'd just be uh, curious as to what they view the biggest problem with all that. Well, Mr. Hogan is here. I don't know if he's prepared to speak on it tonight or not. He's our public works director, but we got we got one gentleman right here. It looks like he mm -hmm. needs to fill out a public comment card. Then uh, mm -hmm. run out and grab one of those little. Uh, <laughs> no, Mike, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, I mean, you've looked at it. I know you've looked at it several times. So. I have. It's it's a bad situation. Uh, the way that it's designed, I think, is the only way it, it's going to work properly. Um, the asphalt's flaking up beside the curb because the curb and gutter is, uh, you know, holding water. Uh, if we do the overlay after the job is done, um, you know, we can slope it, crown it, mm -hmm. um, and having the extra manholes will catch the water better and, and, and channel it out to that low part. Okay, and I assume the little cement ditch would go away at that point and you'd be able to have the street level there and all that yes. stuff. Uh, where, where does that water currently drain? Does it drain out there to the uh, boulevard and end up in that ditch? It does. It, it goes out uh, to the boulevard. And, and actually, it kind of drains both ways, but it, it, it drains more toward uh, Arnold Palmer. Okay. And, and all that is flat, so it, it drains slow. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember Saunders, I don't. Did you? Was your question for Mr. Hogan? Or? Oh, well, uh, no, it wasn't. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> is yours, Councilmember? Yeah. Okay. All right. Hold, hold on then. All right. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Um, I'm just trying to get uh, a better understanding. So having those four different uh, curb boxes, drop-ins, drop they you know, will give us the opportunity to capture the water before it all collects in that one area, correct? So that's the, the whole idea is that we're, instead of putting a Band-Aid effect by redredging that drain that's existing, we're going to put in four, we're going to we're going to basically put in the drainage that should have been put in before Correct. to collect that water that's that's rushing down and collecting at that spot. Is that correct? Right. And there's a half cul-de-sac um, in one corner of that. I don't know which north, east, south, west, east. north. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not sure. Do you know? Now, where the existing drainage is the southeast corner. Okay. The half cul-de-sac where it holds the water the most uh, I know there's two drop inlets that will go in there that will channel the water out of that cul-de-sac that so holds we'll never water even so much. Get to that spot, uh, right? And, and channel it on out to the to the low end. Yeah. T two of the boxes will go where the existing swell goes across the road at. Right. right. So two of the boxes will go there, and then two other boxes will go a hundred and two hundred and six feet west of where the existing curb inlets are now. So they would go west of there Catch. toward the other half cul-de-sac that I think Mike's referring to. Right. Yeah. And far as the asphalt overlay, we haven't done any, I haven't done the, the footage or the, or the tonnage on that to know, you know, exactly what and, the asphalt would be. And, my, and I'm glad you asked that because my next question was, is that <clears throat> something that would have to be covered under the project or can we cover that under our normal um, Be under road. the normal um, street, street fine. Overlay. Okay. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Hogan? Yeah, I've got one more. Okay. All right. Is, has there been any flooding in that neighborhood? Has they houses, garages, anything been flooded as a result of that situation? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, it's just. So it does drain it, and really the biggest problem is it leaves that puddle. Is that? Is yeah, that and, and yeah, and yeah, and the damage. water standing in the curbs, uh, you, you know, in numerous spots. Oh, all the way around Victoria. Okay. It stands in other places. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and that's what's leading to the asphalt deterioration along the curb. I didn't yeah. notice that. And that's the places. reason for putting the, the extra drop inlets in. All righty. Okay. But to the best of my knowledge, a house has not flooded in there. The good thing is at least the houses are higher than the streets, mm -hmm. uh, which is not the case in every neighborhood we have. Right. So. Yeah. Um, could we hear public yeah, comment? Yeah, yeah. Mr. McGrath, yeah, if you would state your name and address for the record, please. Mike McGrath, 15 Victoria Circle. And I live in the deepest spot on the, on the whole circle. It all drains 
right there in that ditch in front of my house. And there has not been any flooding at all. But the, uh, the standing water is leading to the pavement getting all busted up. And it's just, it's just an eyesore. It's a place for mosquitoes and everything else. And it's been that way for as long as I've lived there. And I've been there about 24 years. And I've had neighbors who have been there longer than me that saw my house getting built. And of course, it was done incorrectly when it was first put in. So uh, it's time to get it fixed. Yeah. It's time. You know, it's been 34 years now. So it's time to get it fixed. And I know you can't do it immediately, maybe even this year, and that's fine. But uh, if, if it's on the project list, and I understood uh, the respected Mr. Cogdale uh, had that on his list or whatever, and then that project died with him, I guess. I don't know. Well, it, it didn't die with him. It's just okay. we were trying to we kept trying to find a solution for it. Okay. And, and it took a little bit longer to to come up with something than we did because, I mean, yes, Robert came and looked at it. Robert took me out there several times, and uh, we kept on our engineers and every part of the thing is we're also putting in the streets so we're not cutting everybody's driveway too because we're afraid if we start cutting a lot of driveways, we may encounter some wet soil conditions under there. So based on the recommendations of the engineers, because of utilities and driveways, we're staying out in the city streets so that we're responsible for that, so yeah. The solution sounds really good in terms of even eliminating that drainage ditch that's in front of my house. That's the, solu that's the solution, that's the fix. Right, and, and, you, and you're right, anytime there's water ponding, it, it's a chance at this time mm -hmm. of year for mosquitoes yeah. to breed in that yeah, area. But, yeah, but if you can get it in your next process, next budget process, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, Mr. McGrath. Don't go. Uh, <laughs> no, he's got a question. Yeah, I think he has a question for you, so you got to go up here, yeah. Okay. Stay at the mic so that so that they can hear you on the video that we're making. Okay. So. <laughs> Council Member Sa Saunders. Thank you. Um, you kind of beat me to it when you turned the slip in to talk because I was going to ask you to come up here and talk because okay. we talked a couple of times about this. Yes, uh-huh. And, um, um, one of the questions I was going to ask, um, Alderman Mosley already asked about flooding, but I would like to be a little more specific because when you say our houses, have houses been flooded, flooded is a somewhat subjective word. What's flooding to me might not be to you and vice versa. So I'll ask that question in a different way. Do you know of any, and if you told me in our conversations, I've forgotten, you know, I'm getting old. So does water run across people's yards there? Is that a problem? No. It's, it's exclusively ponding, street and Accumulation drain. and ponding. Okay. Like my backyard becomes a solid lake, a complete pond. There's no dry dirt in my whole backyard whatsoever. Okay. And that, that's yard flooding. Yeah. And there's flooding in front of my house and it gets high enough that I move my vehicle so that the water doesn't enter my vehicle parked in the street. So it gets, you know, that deep. Like that deep? But it's, it's temporary and it runs off. But it's a continuing problem. But it's never gotten in your house? No. no not anywhere close, You're no. lucky there. Yep. Pretty Fine. deep water. Fine. I'm, the, I'm the deepest spot in the circle. Are there other people either contiguous to you or down the street that are also experiencing standing water and heavy rains? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all I had. I was just curious. Sure, sure. That makes okay. a difference. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Council Member Timmons. Hey, Mike, I've spoken with you a couple times, too, and I want to thank you. you he's where we got the photos from. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Those are my pictures. Those are your pictures. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. They're helpful. All better than the ones I took. Okay. And <laughs> thank you for bringing this up. Appreciate that. Okay, so uh, Keep on look at. this will be in your budget uh, package when it comes out in uh, October. Is that what I'm hearing everybody would prefer or wants yes. to do? Yeah. Okay, all right. Something to consider this year, yes, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's going to be in there, so yes. Um, and I've got a couple other things. Uh, one that I had uh, has already been discussed, but it's the road initiate courts. Uh, and what I do want to say is I was not aware of the situation until last Tuesday afternoon. So that's when I was made aware of the situation uh, at courts. Uh, and I think we've done uh, well to get estimates and everything else to this point. But uh, 
after going back down there again today, and I've been down there almost every day since last Tuesday, uh, going back down there today, I did see that we had a significant uh, issue over in the old jail area. It's where it actually is occurring at. And uh, so, um, so I think the best thing to do is to move them there because I don't want, what I don't want to do is throw good money after bad and spend money in that building and then we move them out of there in another few months anyway or whatever. So what, what I may be coming back with is we're going to still do some temporary stuff to try to uh, secure the building because there's some holes in the back and some things like that. We're going to do that to make sure that it doesn't deteriorate anymore, even though I don't think anybody's going to use that building for anything. But then I may come back to the council with a rec uh, 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 request that the council allow us to market that piece of property and put it on the market. So... Uh, probably be coming back the first of September or, or meeting in September since I won't be here at the next meeting. Uh, but that would be what I would like to do with that. Uh, also, the uh, interchange project, the bid opening has been delayed until October the 24th. And the reason for that is that the right of way, they're still trying to finalize the right of way documents and they have to have everything done at least four weeks prior to the bid in order to publish it. And so that is August the 14th. And I talked to the programming director at the highway department, Jared Wiley, uh, last week. And then I uh, talked to Jennifer Williams, who's in right away uh, today. She's the right away, uh, the head of right away division. And uh, she said that, yeah, they just didn't feel comfortable that they could get everything worked out by the 14th of August, but she felt uh, confident that it wouldn't move beyond October the 24th. Now, does that mean we're going to be able to break ground before the end of the year? Well, and I, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but does it look like we can do it? It looks like we can, yes. We, I'd actually already met with the Public Affairs Department last week, as a matter of fact, and we were setting a date in October to do a groundbreaking. Uh, and so we can probably still do that, but uh, it's a uh, what the highway department doesn't do is they don't count time against the contractor usually from November through February because that's usually not a, a good time to work. So the contractor may or may not mobilize, but we could still do a groundbreaking even before the contractor mobilized. So, and that'll be up to the highway department because well, they think, will handle all that. I think it's important that the citizens see that we're not sitting on this. Mm -hmm. Right. They gave us some money. Mm -hmm. I would like to be able to show them. Look, we're break. We're move. We're moving on this. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So. And AT and T has things to move too. Maybe they'll want to get that out of the way. Yeah, and they the the last two times I've been out to the site, the uh, utility people from the highway department have been out there too, and they were waiting on AT and T one day to meet with them. So. They're working on that also. So, yeah, the re utility relocations, yeah. Councilmember Mosley? Yeah, I just wanted to verify. I, I guess we're done as far as anything we're having to do. Uh, we've, we've passed the bonds. We should have the bond money available. I don't know if it goes into an escrow or what. But um, in other words, we're, we're done. That big old long 82-point list that, that you had, is you got, got them all ticked off. Is that correct? Uh, now, I hadn't looked at that in a while. If construction is on it, then no, we hadn't ticked that one off. But as far as the 100% design plans, that's been yeah. turned in. Everything, all that. That, everything we have to do, any more approvals, yes. it's all right. done. It, to the best of my knowledge, it is. Now, the one thing that hasn't happened, the bond has not closed yet. That's August the 29th. So that's basically done in New York City, and we just sit here in Little Rock on the phone. But uh, we, we authorize the closing to take place, yeah. and that's something that I do, not the council necessarily. You've approved the documents at the last council meeting, and so that's you know so that that's still left to do. But that's the money will be available August the 29th. Okay. Uh, so then it would be given to the highway department then once the bids are received, and then they would take care of it during the construction project. Okay. Hallelujah. Council Member Scott. Um, I did want to say that some, um, a spokesperson for the state was giving incorrect information in public meetings, and some of that information was coming back to me uh, that made it sound like the project was 50-50 chance of not happening, that we didn't have rights of way, we didn't have 
permits. We needed wetland permits and all of those kinds of things. And when I talked to the mayor about it, he called that individual, and that person just was misinformed. He had not been informed by the people in, on his team uh, what was going on. He didn't even know Counts Massey was completed. Oh, so <laughs> if those kinds of rumors were out there and you were hearing that kind of thing, it was very upsetting to some of the citizens who heard it and reported it back to me. So I'm glad we got that straightened out. And thank you for following up and, on that. And I called that gentleman the day uh, Council Member Scott called me He's like, we all hadn't even finished Towns Massey yet. I said, we finished it last October. And he said, what? I'm going to drive out there this weekend then. So, uh, so yeah, he, he was just misinformed. He said he had not been given correct information from his personnel. So, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, I, I know how that is. I mean, I hear information from three people sometimes. I still don't have the right information. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and that's happened recently. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, sometimes you got to go see it for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing I needed to mention is Miss Courtney Dunn, who has been my executive assistant, uh, has been given. She's not here tonight. She asked off, but uh, or asked to be able to leave this meeting. But uh, she has been appointed the executive director of the Jacksonville Chamber, okay. and so her last day will be this Friday. Uh, and so. Uh, since there, since I am not running for mayor, I will probably not replace that position. That's the plan right now, and let the incoming mayor take care of that. Uh, now, there's she handles the website too, so we may struggle a little bit, and we may even try to find somebody on a temporary basis to try to do the website. But uh, I can I can take care of myself some days. Uh, Miss Dunn did a great job for me though, and kept a lot of stuff off of me. Uh, so my life will get a little bit more hectic uh, for the next four and a half months or whatever. But uh, I wish her well because this is a really good opportunity yeah. mm -hmm. for her. And if you happen to have the, the newspaper, uh, she was written up in the uh, River Valley section and then the Three Rivers section edition uh, yesterday's paper. So, uh, But I wish her the best of luck, and uh, she, uh, it's a great opportunity for her. So. All right, I'll move on. I'll get off the mayor's comments finally. Uh, Planning Commission report, and that's Council Member Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, they uh, had they had no old business. Um, they had just three items on their new business, uh, two of which came before us and we passed, which was the conditional use permit for the church and the proposed um uh, uh, addition to uh, Carnahan Village and and then the third one is just the uh, preliminary development plan for Carnahan Village so they were all um, passed unanimously with I think there was only one member that wasn't in attendance so I think that was Mr. Ramsey and that's all I have for the Planning Commission all right thank you Councilmember comments? Councilmember Mosley? Uh, yeah, I went to a uh, uh, an RDOT uh, uh, hearing over in West Little Rock that they had a couple of weeks ago, and they they were discussing and showing the plans for that redo from about Pleasant Valley Drive all the way down to uh, where Welton Heights uh, Road goes up there. and. Uh, it's quite a thing. Uh, I can't remember now how much it costs, but it's a lot of money. <laughs> and but it, what they're doing is they're uh, they're eliminating uh, uh, Rodney Parham. They're eliminating that intersection, Rodney Parham and Cantrell. Cantrell will actually go over what's now currently the intersection, and so anybody on Cantrell doesn't have to stop there, and that'll remove some of the bottlenecks. That's good. And, it, and I'm not sure, I haven't ever driven that in the morning, but I've, I've heard stories that people are trying to get off on the Cantrell exit and it gets backed up yeah. down to the bridge. Okay. That should really help that, mm -hmm. I would think. Mm -hmm. And uh, That's smart. So uh, anyway, they've got quite a, quite a deal. They're utilizing a traffic circle and, and all kinds, and Texas roundabouts, the mayor and Texas I. Texas turnaround. I used to Texas harass the major, mayor about trying to get Texas turnarounds on the boulevard. And, and, uh, 
<laughs> he, he didn't like them as much as I did. Yeah, I don't like them. I like the name. What is a Texas turd? <laughs> what that is is you can what if you're going you one turn. way. You you know, if you're if you get off if you get off of Cantrell, you can go west, and then uh, you go under the bridge where it goes over Cantrell, and you can do a U-turn oh, without having to they stop. They have that on Shackleford too. Pardon? I think they have one similar like that in Shackleford in um, the Interstate 630. They do. You can yeah, turn it's around. Under the, it's yeah. under the bridge right under the bridge. Yeah. So anyway, they're doing that, and I think it's from both directions. So yeah, yeah. try to eliminate people from having to sit in a stoplight. Hmm. Steve anyway. wanted me to build them in North Little Rock. That was the thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all. We I've can't got. even get traffic thank lights you. done. <laughs> Council Member Vapers in. I want to thank Mr. Hogan again for help with an issue. Got to sit under the teaching of Mr. Grummer this past week, community development course, and it was very, very good and took us on a bus tour and uh, just some amazing things uh, as far as community development in Little Rock. Just really encouraging. Um, Miss Alicia Gillen was voted the year two champion at uh, the CDI up at UCA this past week, exhibiting uh, leadership for that class. And then I had the opportunity to graduate uh, from CDI at UCA this last week, and I appreciate uh, the mayor allowing me to be a part of the Community Development Institute. You mean I could have kept you out? <laughs> Every year I go, I'm just overwhelmed with what I don't know in community and economic development. It is, there is so much. And um, to meet with, in our class, when you spend three years with a group of people, 35, 40 people, you uh, build a lot of common relationships. And there are some people with ultimate passion like you cannot believe for community development. And it is really inspiring to be with a group of people like that for an entire week. I was not made to sit in a class for eight and a half hours a day, though. Right. This I do know. <laughs> so I'm, I was glad to go, and I'm very glad that it's over. I'm <laughs> glad I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, I mean, there's been there's several people that work for the city that have been to CDI. It's a very very good program, and uh, I know uh, Miss Hogue went to it, uh, and then now Councilmember Vaprazan and Miss Timmons has been to it, and Courtney's been to it, and Judy's been to it, and I've been to it. So it's a very good program. Probably missing somebody else that's attended it. Councilmember Williams. Okay, back to the issue of drainage. I was just wanting to know what the status was. Of, I've, I've seen some equipment out there at the corner of Highway 100 and, and Odom. I wondered if that was. That's not our equipment. That's not ours. Wow. That's a cable company that's still boring in that area. Okay. Uh, she's talking about the drainage that uh, off Hogan down there, Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got that on the schedule to get done. We're just. I saw it had dried up a little bit over there. I guess because yeah. it's been we haven't had a whole lot. We hadn't had all, a whole lot of rain. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. But Thank it's you. on the schedule to get done. And the, yeah, like I say, I, there's a bunch of equipment parked there, but it's not our equipment. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Councilmember Hope. Uh, visited with um, as I'm knocking on doors to uh, uh, get signatures. Visited with two people from uh, the uh, Garden Oaks area. Uh, we did such an outstanding job of the alleyways that they have a new problem now. People are speeding through the alleyways. So they have, you know, kids out there and people out there and whatever. So um, they're going to be asking for maybe some kind of something to get the traffic to slow down going through the alleyways. Um, and then I have a, I kept uh, Mike Hogan on the phone. Um, we have a, the second house before you go into Garden Oaks Cove. Uh, the gentleman, Mr. Risser, stopped me, and uh, we, he has some flooding still during the rain events that uh, he has to have um, uh, sandbags and whatever to uh, keep the water out of his yard and house and all that kind of stuff. So um, I discussed it with Mike, and um, he'll, the gentleman will make his mind up about what, who to talk to and when. But that's all. Thank you. Are there any other council members' comments? <clears throat> Mr. City Attorney? Nothing. Madam City Clerk? Just bringing everyone's attention that we do have an open seat on the Civil uh, Service Commission. It is to fill a remaining term which expires in uh, May of next year. It will be advertised in the North Little Rock Times tomorrow. 
So if you know of anyone who is interested, please encourage them to apply. That's it, Mayor. Okay. There's no other comments. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. All those in favor, <laughs> please signify by saying yes. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Terry Williams. Marion on this salary committee. Oh, is that right?